So I've seen people, for example, who... I've seen people who are in families where probably nothing they were ever told was true. Like it was never just true. It was always twisted and bent in some way by whoever was talking to them for the purposes of that person. Power or domination or, or positive illusion or, or delusion or something. Like it, all the communication within the family was motivated. And so, there, it, it's so awful to grow up in an environment like that because you can't get a grip on what's real. And then, you know, it can get worse than that in that the person will tell you that they love you and they'll act all sweet, but every time you do anything that's even vaguely productive and useful, they'll just criticize you to death. And all the while telling you that they love you. It's really horrible. And that's all tangled up with deception and lies. And, and it's a weird thing because if you look at the Freudian hypotheses, you'll notice that Freud attributed an awful lot of psychopathology to repression, right? But I think the distinction between repression and self-deception or deceit is very permeable. It's like, what's the difference between repressing something and lying to yourself about it? Well, Freud would say often that repression occurs unconsciously, but I really wonder about that. I think that what happens is that something happened or you did something that you don't like and it's bothering you and you could think it through but you just decide not to you just don't think it through so it's left vague and uncertain and you know it's fairly emotionally salient but you just refuse to think it through and you practice doing that until you've built up a habit of not thinking that through and then you forget that you've built up the habit and then it's like it's being repressed unconsciously but I think that you know or at least you knew when you first did it and so you know when you meet people who are acting in a twisted and peculiar way and you ask yourself uh, they're very manipulative say you ask yourself well do they know what they're doing the answer to that could be well no but another answer could be yeah but they knew once they knew when they made the decision to start acting like that but after they did it a hundred times or so and made it into an automatic routine well then they forgot its origin and now it runs autonomously and so now they don't know but they did know and so, you know, this is the sort of point, and this is the real point of the existentialist, where clinical psychology and, and the claims of morality start to become very tightly aligned. And it's something that the psychiatric and psychological industries, so to speak, don't really tackle head on. My experience has been that in these situations, for example, where the person has five terrible things going on in their life, that there's just deception twisted in and strewn in all of that. People are betraying each other, and there's no fidelity in the relationships, there's no clear and genuine communication, everything's manipulation, no one admits to what they're really up to. You know, there's a lot of false and saccharine love, which has absolutely nothing to do with love. It's all for appearance, you know, and, and you cannot be healthy in a situation like that. I don't think, in my experience, you know, apart from terrible luck, because, you know, you can get cancer, diabetes, or any number of awful things. In my experience, apart from the tragedies of life, there is nothing that hurts people more than deception. Lies do people in. And that's an existentialist claim. The claim is, first, while life is basically unbearable, that's an existential claim. And then there's, there's the hope that with sufficient caution and attention and clarity of of thought and speech, you can man, you can master it. You can you can master it to the point where you can even accept the fact that it's tragic. But if you multiply its tragedy with the use of deceit, it's like forget it. Because you know it's one thing to be hurt. You know maybe you break your leg. That's one thing. It's another thing to be attacked by two or three people who break your leg and do everything they can to demean you at the same time. It's like lots of people break their leg and they're not traumatized. It's very few people who can go through the latter experience without being, you know, seriously and permanently damaged.